in a rare confluence of events this week, two Mars rovers in far-flung locations on the planet were commanded to use their drill to collect a sample of Martian rock. Both executed their task as ordered, but only one delivered the goods. On this episode of Mars Guy. I'll start with an update on last week's episode about the holes made not by the drill on Curiosity, but by its dust removal tool. Since arriving on Mars back in August of 2012, some of the bristles of one of the two wire brushes have tangled together, creating a bundle rigid enough to sometimes drill into rocks. The seeming randomness of when this occurs remains a mystery, but I can now report on how the brushing operation produces the elongated shape of the dusted patch, thanks to a comment from a former rover planner on the Curiosity mission. Turns out that the entire turret carrying the DRT rotates back and forth a bit during the brushing operation, which creates the shape we see. And apparently the tangled bristles that can produce a hole remain in the same spot even during the slight turret rotation. So there you have it, another curiosity. The actual drill on Curiosity was the first one ever sent to Mars. It was designed to produce powder from several centimeters inside a rock that can be collected by the drill and ultimately delivered to the science instruments inside the body of the rover. This is different than the drill on Perseverance, which is designed to collect actual rock core samples about the size of a AA battery. The core samples are tightly sealed in tubes for eventual return to Earth. Curiosity drove a few meters from the rocks where it inadvertently drilled these holes to another outcrop exposure to drill a real hole. Here's Mars Guy for scale. This outcrop has fewer fractures and less debris cover than the previous one. Interestingly, the brushing operation here did not produce a hole despite what looks to be a very similar rock type as the previous one with a hole, including the whitish veins. The drilling operation proceeded without any issues, relying on the now standard use of its arm to drive the drill downward after the drive mechanism on the drill itself failed about four years into the mission. Here's how the hole looked to the Molly camera. You can see that it's in the same spot that was originally brushed with the DRT. The pile of drill tailings has an interesting collection of chunky bits that, in one prominent case, preserves the curvature of the hole that it came from. Despite the chunkiness, the team reported that powdered rock sample was successfully delivered to both the ChemMin and SAM instruments on board the rover. While this was going on in Gale Crater, about 3,700 kilometers away in Jezero Crater, Perseverance has been exploring some interesting rocks on the outer edge of the crater rim. This is another great example of rocks with the remarkable purplish coating that's been seen in many places since the beginning of the mission. On Earth, you wouldn't think twice about rock coatings, which arise from some combination of water, dust, and probably microbes. On Mars, the water part of that combination is exceedingly rare in the current environment, and microbes? They're the holy grail of Mars exploration. Perseverance used its fully functioning drill to core into a slab of this rock, but the slab appears to have shattered under the forces produced by the rotary percussive drilling operation. At multiple steps along the way, the drill shifts and moves dramatically, causing even the rover to move a bit. After less than 7 minutes of what usually takes more than 20 minutes, the drilling stopped presumably when Perseverance detected problems. And that's how things stand at the time of posting this episode. The drill has not been retracted, and it's not clear if a sample has been obtained. So at this point in the drilling duel, Curiosity beats Perseverance. 